Hello and welcome to this edition of Command Performance. Today we are joined by Megan and Bern Cly of the one and only Megan and Megan Jean and the Cly family band, described as a hard touring, foot stomping, guitar beating, upright licking, washboard scratching, banjo picking. Madness with a voice like the devil herself. Did you I get that right? It. You got yes, it. Sir. You got it. That's, that is an excellent description. Probably the best I've heard in forever. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, let's go ahead and just start with the, your latest album. Just mm -hmm. came out, like literally. Well, it's it's coming out. out. Yeah, it's, it's coming. Just got January. Oh, just got yes. finished. Mm -hmm. Yesterday. Oh my gosh. So you're mm -hmm. on the road with new. it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it is stinky new. Yes. Now this is your third album. Yes. Yeah. And we had a little discussion earlier about the album title. Can you tell right. me a little bit about that? Yes. The album is called The Devil Herself, which which some people it's not me. make assumptions about, but we're not actually calling my wife the devil. <laughs> yeah, we'd be a lot richer. She's actually a very nice person. Um, <laughs> what it is about is, you know, sometimes in the, people look at things they don't understand and they're quick to call it something. And uh, and that's kind of that's we tend to the have a catch all that we're that we're we have a catch all term for the things we don't understand throughout history and that's just the devil. So okay, so we're clarifying that uh, basically Megan does have a halo <laughs> on her. <laughs> Megan is a saint of sorts. Can I have a halo that also has little horns on it? Maybe? We should have we should have talked to the prop guys. <laughs> <laughs> now you guys, am I correct? You cut this album at the Jam Room in Columbia, South yes. Carolina. Yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah. yeah. Tell me a little bit about that process. Oh, that's it, a great. It's a metal studio. It is a dude metal studio. They record like a uh, Kylisa, a number of other notable um, sort of like doom metal bands. And we really wanted to make an old timey dance metal record. And it's a dude studio. There's uh, no frills. There's no, it's not no decorated punches. nice. It, and they want you, they want you to go out on the road and play your material, come in rehearsed, and then they just press record. And of course they're the guy that recorded it, his name is Zach uh, Thomas. He's amazing, and he's he works just as fast as we do. He's been in that room for seven years, and he just, you don't have to worry. I'm not the girl that knows the technical specs of the microphone, and which my that's mm -hmm. not my job. I'm just gonna sing it, you make it sound good, and he just gets it. So, uh, it being a dude studio, do they basically encase you in chicken wire like in the Blues Brothers and throw <laughs> beer beer yeah. bottles at you? Is it I'm that say kind of feel? It's possible, but it was pretty, you know, there weren't that many people there so when we were there, so we were pretty safe. We had the place to we ourselves. We had a good time. Yeah, we had the place to ourselves. We just had, you it's know, just we very no frills, mm -hmm. and we were I there have. For four days. You know, like it, it was a record. nice place to just focus on music and, you know, just wear jeans and a t-shirt and go into a, to record every day and you, yeah. you're not, um, no one was, no one's blowing smoke uh, up your rear. You're there, they're literally, and, and to have the, um, to, to be able to work with someone that says you can do a better take and know that they mean it and mm -hmm. they're not just trying to right, impress right. you or with the equipment or like, it, it, it was just a get in there, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am did it in four days, I did all the vocals in eight hours, and just because we've, this material that is going on this record has been performed in front of a live audience anywhere from 450 to 1100 times. So we yeah. just went in there with it ready to go. And that is awesome. Now you guys are based out of Charleston, well, you know, that's a military term, everybody's based out of, I could just say you live in Charleston. <laughs> no, you can totally say we're based yeah, out of, we don't have a home address as away anymore. from Charleston yeah. as anyone in the military <laughs> yeah. might be. Yeah. So. And, and why Charleston? What, how'd you guys wind up there and why did you decide that, you know, this is what, uh, this is what we're gonna call home? Oh. Once upon a time, it's beautiful, number one. Once upon a time, we lived in New York City. Mm -hmm. And then we realized New York City isn't that much fun to live in if you're not making a lot of cash. So we said, let's let's just go out on the road and tour as a band. And we spent a year and a half saving up money and then we planned it and we went out and we did a year and a half pretty much transient. Mm -hmm. um, and then we found Charleston along this process. And Charleston is it's a coastal city. Um, it's, it's a, a lot of it's tourists. It's got a lot of nightlife. Yeah. It's got a lot of tourists. And, they drink um, a whole lot of liquor. They like liquor a lot in Charleston, and it they like liquor. Makes they it like easier music. for musicians. It, you know, they, they coincide. They kind yeah. of marry up there. So yeah. Uh, yeah. there's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. When people drink a lot uh, in a town, music is always right there because they got to have something to do. And uh, one of the things about Charleston that it was sort of a lucky coincidence is that sort of landed there as the economy was slowing down for everyone, and. Um, found that rather than in some places in the country, we found that people were cutting their live music schedules uh, in order to, 
you know, get through the tough time, but in the South and in Charleston in particular, we found that people were turning to music in, hmm. in, a, in a tough time for solace and for comfort and for joy. And um, we ended up just falling in with an amazing group of musicians. There. We met Shovels and Rope. They're getting, you know, huge now. And of course, they're amazing, lovely, wonderful. Another married couple on the road. They're so many great bands coming through there and and of course it's always been known for Hootie and the Blowfish mm -hmm. but there's just this really wonderful little music oh, scene a, going on a, there. Every week there's a concert series called All One Dog Green every Wednesday mm -hmm. up uh, It's just a barn a little, jam, it's in the middle of the swamp. Yeah, they have a free concert anywhere from you know 50 to 200 people show mm -hmm. up. It's there's a pygmy goat named Jukebox that eats your set list when you're playing. A pygmy goat <laughs> named Jukebox. A sw free swamp concert? Yeah, yeah basically. Welcome to South I mean, don't you, you want to go, you want to go right now. Oh, I know. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Right there. Well, they show up on Wednesday. Just ask for Eddie White. He'll, yeah, Eddie White. I'm yeah. on it. I'm back. Actually, I'm probably going to ask for the goat. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, there's also a big military presence down there. Yes. Do you guys bump into our uniform personnel at shows? Yeah, you kind of can't avoid it. We specifically lived yes. in North Charleston. Actually, we specific, specifically lived in North Charleston, which is where most of the bases are. We're very close to the Air Force base. There's a Navy base there. There's the old Navy base. Which uh, the is old cool. Navy base. <laughs> so the SS Hunley, first uh, United States submarine, mm -hmm. and the members of the Hunley of the first Hunley are interned in Magnolia Cemetery, which Cemetery Man on our last album was about. Um, I mean, there's just so much history there, but we actually have, just yesterday, we were in Norfolk visiting friends in the Navy at the base there that we met down in Charleston. She's been taking our picture for years and her husband is in the Navy. Um, and so we actually met a lot of, I mean, of service people Navy, there. Air Force, and, and, and the Coast so Guard. Yeah, the Coast they, yeah, every, and they come yeah. out to the shows like a, a lot and are very like supportive. Our friend Marty, he, he and Joe, and yeah. Marty Joe and Joe, Bush, like yeah. Joe Bush, yeah, they they hosted an open mic and it was just really it's it's very cool that there is an active um, portion of that of the service people in Charleston, they're also playing music and going to shows mm -hmm. and going to open mics and things like that. He used to give lessons to a guy that's now stationed in the Baltic. Somewhere in Alaska, sea, or somewhere in Alaska, know. where there's an island with like 40 people, and he took a stone, or like 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 he took like stone cold metal guitar lick riff classes from Burn, you know, just yeah. so that he could like uh, shred yeah. when he was like on this tiny island in Take the middle out of nowhere. That Alaskan seclusion frustration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nothing now, like I, metal. <laughs> I also know, uh, you know, uh, this is full disclosure. Yeah. Uh, I also know that you guys have an extensive uh, family. Uh, military background yeah. as well. I served in Iraq with mm -hmm. uh, Burns' brother. Uh, mm -hmm. You also have another brother that was in the Marine mm -hmm. Corps. You've got cousins that family. are deployed. Could you tell us a little bit about that and what that yeah. has been like knowing that yeah. uh, those folks are out there and we've taken your music uh, with us. And they to really where we have travel. too. Well, my, my grandfather was actually a Marine and he was, um, he was in the first wave of boats at Iwo Jima. He got a silver star for valor and a purple heart. Wow. Um, we, of course, we didn't know anything about this. My whole life, he would, he would um, go out and, and shoot a pheasant. We never knew what he did in the military because he, he didn't it, uh, he didn't talk about it too much. He was a he was mm -hmm. a farmer at that time, you know, uh, a Polish farmer, and. Every year he would come back and my grandmother would ask him how many bullets because she needed to know how many to, to look for and he would say just one. And we found out that he was a sharpshooter and single-handedly took down a machine gun nest on the beach that was instrumental in taking wow. uh, the beach. And we didn't even know this until he was, I mean, well into his 70s. And, um, but then I found a picture of my grandfather and we didn't even know, but he had a banjo in his hand <laughs> and he was jamming with some of his friends, and I just thought that was so cool, you know. It was probably polka. Yeah, probably polka, <laughs> it was for probably, sure. Most likely polka. But I have, um, I have several cousins in the Army, in the Reserves, in the Navy, and a lot, a lot of my cousins on my, on my, on my dad's side, and um, are, are, have, have served in the past several years, and uh, they kind of all take it, it, it's it, it, it's really wonderful. They take our music with them mm -hmm. overseas, and it never ceases to amaze me how many little messages we get from people being like, "Hey, you know, your cousin played this, or your friend played this for me," mm -hmm. and it, it really does mean a lot. You know, we actually on our first EP, Autumn, there's a song that we wrote for our um, for our, our friends and family that were going over um, as sort of a salute to to what they were doing. Um, and, and, and so we, we actually have a pretty close ties to, to 
people in the service and a lot of musicians kind of go the wrong way and think that they're somehow these two can't these two groups of people can't find common ground and music is so amazing for that, you know? That, that's for sure. I remember uh, many a dusty evening uh, to, uh, out in Anbar province in Iraq sitting mm -hmm. with uh, your brother Phil Byrne and just uh, enjoying a little slice of home, yeah. basically. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, the thing, I think, I mean, as far as like musicians, a lot of musicians don't understand about the military is the military is made up of people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's made up of people Real who are people. like from all over, so. They're going to be like, we're humans. you're going to be just like <laughs> people everywhere else. There's not much of a difference other than, you know, your job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly.